Hello, so this Science of Sport video focuses in on the BTEC Sport and Exercise Sciences Unit 2 Functional Anatomy, um, specifically looking at the skeletal system and the D2 learning aims within that. So it focuses purely on the functions of the skeletal system. The specification itself requires you to understand the six different functions of the skeletal system. So let's look at the first function. Clearly, if we don't want to basically be a mess of flesh and organs, we need a supporting framework. And our skeletal system gives us the distinct shape and structure that holds us upright or in different sporting positions, but basically is a stabilizing framework with which uh, we can support organs within and attach bones externally. We know that already that we've got this axial skeleton, this central uh, part of our skeleton here, and we've got our appendages, the limbs that we have, and that's the appendicular skeleton. And if you think about it, our skeleton has to support all of our body mass. It, th that mass culminates in, in forces being pushed down through our little tiny feet here, um, and the short bones of our ankle and the, the little long bones of our, our feet. So it's an incredibly complicated but strong structure. If we had to generalize then, the lower body, our limbs, our appendages, our feet, give us stability and often it's translated as the upper body giving us a little bit more mobility. So we have perhaps greater range of movements in the upper limbs. A second function of our skeletal system then is one of protection. So we often can think of the cranium or the skull protecting the brain within it. We can think of our thoracic cavity, our ribs and our sternum, protecting the lungs and the heart encased within it. Or, for example, the vertebral column, the different vertebrae, um, protecting the spinal cord within that. So many different types of bone within the skeleton are protective. The uh, vertebral column are, column are irregular bones. The cranial bones are flat bones. Um, depending on where they are, they have a specific protective function. And actually, in, in terms of sports performance, this is where these protective roles are incredibly important. If you're involved in contact sports or impact sports like rugby, Obviously, your thoracic cage or your cranium or your pelvis um, are there to protect vital internal organs from any impact. The third of the six functions then is attachment for skeletal muscles. Now, hopefully we understand that we've got skeletal muscles on the top of our skeleton. Um, we've got our biceps brachii, which is in the anterior forearm which attaches by a tendon to the lower forearm, your radius and your ulna. And when that biceps brachii contracts, the lower arm is pulled and we have flexion at the elbow. Now the D1 um, part of the specification looks at the anatomy of bones and in particular bony landmarks. From that then hopefully you can remember that there are certain um, projections for example, tuberosities or processes, which are specific, the sort of raised elements of bones, which are for muscle and tendon attachment or ligament attachment as well. If we look at the spinous processes in the vertebral column, this, the pointy parts of your vertebrae, they're for ligament attachments, but also for muscular attachments. The erector spinae runs all the way up the back of your spine and it will attach to lots of the processes from your um, vertebrae. I put this example here also because it shows your scapula, your shoulder blade, which is a large flat bone. And this large surface area also provides a huge area for attachment. There's a lot of musculature that attaches to your scapula. Um, so this large surface area of that flat bone is particularly suited for that function. So the fourth function of the skeletal system is um, that our bones, in particular long bones, are a source of red blood cell production. Hopefully from earlier videos you'll appreciate that we have two different types of bone tissue, compact 
and spongy or cancellous bone tissue. And it's in the spongy bone tissue, in the gaps between the trabeculae, that we have red bone marrow. And it's this kind of bone marrow which produces red blood cells through a process called erythropoiesis or hematopoiesis. Um, we rely on these red, this red blood bone marrow and these red blood cells to enable us to transport oxygen around the body in the blood. And the red blood cells um, have, contain hemoglobin, which directly carries the oxygen around in our blood. Now, the reason we can produce or we're stimulated to produce new red blood cells is because of a hormone called erythropoietin or EPO. And it's naturally produced in our body. Sometimes actually it can be um, synthetically produced and that's basically a way of some endurance athletes try to cheat and they have a fake version of EPO put into their body to try to make their bodies produce more red blood cells. The reason we need EPO to naturally make us uh, have new red blood cells quite frequently is because they only live for two days. So red blood cells do their job, two days later they need to be replaced. So it's a constant cycle of red blood cell production. In fact, we make two million red blood cells per second. So it's a really critical part of the skeletal function. And this typically, as I said, happens in the long bones and the red bone marrow of the long bones. Yellow bone marrow is actually more for fat storage, so as an energy source. Function number five looks at our bones being a store of important minerals. So 95% of our body's calcium is stored in the bones. And we use the calcium in, in the bones themselves for maintaining strong bones and bone cell production by the osteoblasts but we also use calcium for nerve transmission and for actual muscle contraction so it's a really important mineral phosphorus again 90 percent is stored in the bones and it, similarly we need phosphorus for bone strength bone health and for teeth growing I've just mentioned um, how important bones are for red blood cell production, but also iron um, is stored in the bones as well. And iron is really central to making hemoglobin in our red blood cells. And it's the hemoglobin iron that carries oxygen around our body in the blood. So calcium, phosphorus, iron, really important minerals that are stored in our skeletal system, often in the long bones, but not only. The last function of our skeletal system, then really relevant for us as sports people, is movement. And particularly our long bones act as levers. We have two rigid arms, two rigid bones, two rigid levers, pivoting around an axis or a fulcrum. This lever system enables us to move, whether that's the knee, the arm, the shoulder, we're able to move because we've got some kind of pivot and we've got some solid levers and the levers are the bones. So when our bicep brachii contracts, it pulls on its connection on the lever that's the other side of the joint and enables us to flex our elbow joint here. So you've got to have two, two bones to create a joint and create movement around the fulcrum. So overall then, you will need to be able to describe and explain the different functions of the skeletal system, and there are six. It might be worth considering what way you're going to remember this. Are you going to make up a phrase? Are you going to make up an exam? You know, you're going to use examples, um, some kind of mnemonic to remember those six functions of the skeletal system. Before I finish this video, I just want to show you a typical kind of exam question you might come across. So this exam question gives you some information to start off with. It states that the skeletal system has many functions, including red blood cell production, a supportive framework, storage of minerals, and protection. So it's given you four. And what it then does is it asks you to explain using examples the two other missing functions so you need to know all six to be able to figure out the two that are missing just translating this exam question what you would note is that there are four marks now it's asking you to explain 
specifically using examples. So if you don't give examples, you're basically throwing away two of the four marks. So you need to explain one function, give an example. Explain the second function, give an example to gain your total of four marks. Here is um, examples of student responses to this question. So this information was gained from the examiner's report. I suggest you pause the video, have a little look at both. I think the left-hand one got three marks and the right-hand one got less. Um, the information given in the examiner's remo uh, report tells you what they got or maybe why they missed marks. But let's just finish by having a look at the mark scheme for this. So the two functions that were missing were the uh, attachment for tendons or muscles and movement. Um, so a mark for each of those with an example is really important. So providing attachment for muscles through the bony landmarks and develop that with an example. Movement of the body when the muscles contract, this is your example there.